This is Hollow Knight. Its vast, open-world adventure allows for dozens of hours of exploration that are loaded with unique enemies, challenging bosses, and plenty of secrets to be discovered, all confined within the underground kingdom of Hollow Nest. Hollow Knight is widely considered to be a very difficult game. The exploration and combat is challenging enough on its own, but players have taken things to another level by creating ridiculously tough modded bosses and beating demanding challenges that are simply on another level from the rest of the game, such as the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. The game mode known as Steel Soul is certainly one of these formidable challenges. In Steel Soul, if you die, it's game over. No second chances, no going back to a previous save. In order to beat the game, you need to travel all across the kingdom, fighting boss after boss and collecting items and abilities, all without dying a single time. This is the challenge that I have set out to beat. Steel Soul Mode will be the hardest gaming challenge I have ever done, and this is the story of my very first attempt. My run began as any other Hollow Knight game does. I picked up some Geo, grabbed the lifeblood hearts at the start of the game, and then headed down to Dirtmouth after getting the Fury of the Fallen Charm. I accidentally sat down on the bench, removing my lifeblood, but my mood was quickly lifted by my first encounter with Elderbug. With that, I dropped into my first real location, the Forgotten Crossroads. My objective in Forgotten Crossroads for now was simple. I needed to unlock the Stag Station and beat my first boss of the game, False Knight, in order to obtain the City Crest. After taking way too much time in the giant platform room, I bought Cornifer's map and made it to the False Knight without much trouble, with the only notable stops being to beat Grusmother, who I guess technically became my first boss defeated, and then unlocking the Stag Station. My fight against False Knight went very very smoothly, as I ended up taking 3 total damage and was never lower than 4 health. If things had gone any differently, that would have been a very bad sign, because things would only get harder from here, and if I was having trouble this early on, my chances of beating the whole game would be very low, to say the least. This is coming from someone who was brought to 2 health fighting Gruzzers in one of the first streams of the entire game, but we don't talk about that. Anyways, after beating False Knight and collecting the City Crest and Geo reward, I made my way into the Ancestral Mound and got my first spell of the game, Vengeful Spirit. After fighting my way back out and picking up the Soul Catcher charm along the way, it was time to move on to bigger and better things. I headed back up to Dirtmouth to buy the best charm in the game, Wayward Compass. And with that out of the way, I was finally ready for Green Path. When I was first playing Hollow Knight, I think entering Green Path was when I realized that this game was truly something special. The soothing music and green, lush atmosphere was such a stark contrast to everything that I had seen so far, and it made me excited to see what was coming next. The answer was falling in acid over and over and over again. If falling into acid killed you and could end a Steel Soul run, I don't think I would like this game very much after a few runs. Fortunately, that isn't the case, and every time it happened I only lost one health, meaning that I was able to make it to Cornifer without too much trouble. You'd think hearing this guy humming the same tune on repeat so much would get annoying, but instead for me it's a sign of safety and reassurance. With his map in hand, I paid a small fee to open a gate and unlock a bench, and then worked my way up towards my next objective, which happens to be one of the main characters of the game. Hornet is a challenging boss for someone who's just starting out the game, and when I first fought her with my inexperience, I died many times. Now, I couldn't afford that luxury. Fortunately, I was able to make it to the fight without too much trouble, only stopping to kill Vengefly King on the way. The fight began, and immediately I realized that the experience I've gained in my 50-ish hours of Hollow Knight made this fight not much of a challenge. I ended up taking a total of 4 damage, doing slightly worse than I did against False Knight, but ultimately dispatching Hornet without too much trouble. The reward was one of the best abilities in the game, something that assists with movement speed, combat, and even helps unlock new areas. I had finally unlocked the dash. Using my newfound ability, I made my way to the Green Path Stag Station, and then meandered around the game for a little while, picking up Geo and grabbing some helpful items. I bought a mask shard from the shopkeeper, Sly, and then went down into Forgotten Crossroads and visited Salubra to buy Shaman Stone, a very strong charm. Preparations complete, I accidentally ran into an elevator before finding the entrance to my next location, the Fungal Wastes. Initially, the fungal wastes are relatively easy to navigate, because there's only one main direction you need to be heading, down. 
After forging on through the new location for a few minutes, I ran into another friendly NPC, Cloth. She warned me of a tribe deeper down that were supposedly warriors, but little did she know, that was exactly where I needed to go next. The Mantis tribe is where things start to get a little bit more tricky for me in this Steel Soul run. They're a lot stronger than your average enemy in Hollow Nest, but they also have one of the most important abilities in the game hidden within their village, meaning that fighting them was an absolute necessity if I wanted to beat the game. I entered into the Mantis territory, and immediately got a nasty wake-up call, as a single one of their warriors was able to do two damage to me right off the bat. I survived a few other duels with Mantis warriors before making it to a bench off to the side of their village, and then went even deeper to retrieve one of my favorite charms in the entire game. Dashmaster would allow me to use my recently unlocked dash ability even more rapidly, and that can be extremely helpful while fighting the Mantises. With that, it was time to enter the village. I had to fight a few more warriors, but I eventually managed to make it through and get the ability I came here for, the Mantis Claw. Obtaining the claw meant that now I could wall jump infinitely, which opens up so many options for places to explore. At this point, I could have just left and called it good, but maybe the Mantis tribe's tendencies were rubbing off on me because I was getting itchy for a good fight. In a moment of confidence, I made a potentially stupid call. I decided to challenge the Mantis Lords. I grabbed some lifeblood, and what would end up being a three and a half minute fight began. Mantis Lords are not a necessary boss to fight at this stage of the game, but there are certainly some benefits. The main one is that the Mantises are a tribe entirely based on combat and honor. If you're able to defeat their lords, their strongest fighters, then they'll no longer attack you unless you attack them first. The other rewards are a charm and a chest full of Geo, rewards that I would certainly never pass up on. It would take a couple minutes of fighting before I ended up losing my lifeblood hearts, but I stayed focused, determined to see this through and not let my run end here. This fight would have gone a lot quicker if I had chosen to visit the Nailsmith, who can be found in the City of Tears to upgrade by Nail, but I'd made the decision to fight the boss while I was here. And finally, after another minute of all of my focus, the second Mantis was defeated, and shortly after that, the third. I'd taken a big risk, but it had paid its worth in gold. Or should I say in Geo. Using the Mantis Claw, I crossed over an acid lake, inserted the city crest into a giant statue, and entered into my next location of the run. The City of Tears is a location synonymous with Hollow Knight. Its beautiful background music is matched by a somber yet peaceful environment, with rain constantly showering onto a city still guarded by sentries who remain patrolling, perhaps only vaguely aware that their great capital has long since fallen. My first step in this majestic area was the Nailsmith. If I was to make it very far in this journey, upgrading my nail would be essential. The Geo fee was inconsequential, and it was returned to me in excess when I visited my next friendly character, Relic Seeker Lem. As his name suggests, he seeks out remnants of of Halonest's past, and he's willing to pay quite a large sum to anyone willing to bring him one of the many artifacts that can be found throughout the kingdom. I made my way towards a bench that would mark a good spot to catch my breath, fighting several of the city's guards in the process, and finally arrived below the save point. I wasn't quite safe yet though, as I had to fight a series of enemies that took me down to just 2 health and ended up giving me quite a scare. Fortunately, I made it to the bench just fine, and got the added bonus of saying hi to Cornifer again and purchasing his map while I was at it. The entire point of coming to this part of the City of Tears was to unlock my second spell, and I was nearly there. There was just one area standing between me and my goal, and that was the Soul Sanctum. Guarded by enemies in a different class to what I'd previously faced, I would need to traverse all the way to the very top, where a fight with the Soul Master would await. With no time like the present, I began my journey. I got introduced to the type of enemy I'd be facing in the Soul Sanctum immediately, but I was able to deal with the first Soul Twister I faced relatively comfortably. I continued to work my way up through the Sanctum before arriving at one of the most fun mini-bosses of the game, the Soul Warrior. His moves have tells that are easy to read, and I always enjoy fighting him, mainly because it's consistently challenging, but he usually doesn't kill me. With him out of the way, I just had one more challenging room before the big boss. This room has three Soul Twisters and can catch people off guard, but I went slow and played it very carefully, only taking two damage. With that out of the way, I healed, filled up on soul, and began my fight against the Soul Master. This boss fight can be difficult because of its unpredictability, but I had fought it many times before, so I knew all of his moves. The big weakness of the Soul Master as a boss is it gives you far too many opportunities to heal, so even though I took two damage, I was able to comfortably beat his first stage. 
The game tries to bait you into thinking the fight is over, but after seemingly claiming the spell for myself, he came back from the grave, broke the floor I was standing on, and initiated phase 2 of the fight. This is another moment in the fight that can catch newer players by surprise, but once again, I was ready for it, and I dodged his attacks and finally finished off the Soul Master for good. With that, the desolate dive was mine, and my business in this part of the City of Tears was complete. The next step in my Hollow Knight Steel Soul journey should have been to go through Crystal Peaks and either obtain the Dream Nail or get the ability Crystal Dash. I traveled to the stack station with this in mind, but then I made a horrible decision that I would end up regretting. I realized that with the amount of Geo that I had, I was close to being able to get another complete mask, also known as Hollow Knight's version of an extra life. If you collect 4 Mask Shards, then a full mask is constructed, and you get a permanent boost in health for the rest of the game. I had already bought one from Sly, and after getting one from the Grubfather for saving several of his children, I realized that if I bought one more from Sly, I was just a single shard away from a huge upgrade. I knew exactly where to go. Brooding Moloch is an early game boss that I did not have very much experience fighting at all. I didn't have many strategies, but I just trusted my skill to guide me through. What I didn't count on was the fact that I was much more underleveled in this run than when I had found and defeated Moloch in another game. This would be my downfall. The fight lasted less than a minute. I tried to get some early damage in, but I immediately took two damage myself, and then shortly after, a third. Down to two health already, I was rattled. I tried to dodge his attacks, looking for a chance to heal or get some more damage off, but instead I just got hit again. And for the first time in my Steel Soul journey, I was on just a single health. I found a corner to heal, but took another damage right away. I made a big choice to use some soul to get some spell damage on him, and with this damage, my confidence grew. At this point, I actually started to think I would win this. I thought I'd survived the worst of it, but then everything came crumbling down. I was reduced back down to one health out of nowhere. I managed to get out of harm's way and decided to heal my way back out of the danger zone. My lack of knowledge of Moloch's moves ended up being incredibly costly. I didn't expect it to jump, and in what seemed like slow motion, I was forced to watch as my run was finished. Game over. On my first attempt at Hollow Knight's hardest game mode. Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. If this seems like an unsatisfying ending, that's because the story is far from over. I will beat Steel Soul, no matter how long it takes. And if you, the viewers, want to see the rest of my journey, then I would really appreciate you showing some support on this video, as this is a new style for me, and it's the direction I want to take my channel in the future. Please consider subscribing.